For the past couple of weeks, we've been touring around the English countryside in our rental motorhome. And before we turn it back in, we thought we'd take this opportunity to give you a tour and show you what it was like. Before we go inside, you may notice that we've got flip-flops here in this handy door storage. That's because unlike in North America, full hookup sites don't really exist here. And instead, they often have extremely nice shower blocks or amenities facilities where you can shower and wash up off the RV. So we've been using our flip-flops when we do that and having them here in the door has been extremely handy because we can't forget them on our way out. Why don't we go inside and I'll show you around. If you're like us, the first thing you may notice about the interior of this motorhome is the fact that the decor is much more European. It has a very clean look, there's a lot more white and the dark woods, very, very nice, and it's something that we wish more North American manufacturers would follow suit on. Now the general layout of this motorhome, it's a 7 meter long, 23 foot long motorhome. It's a little bit bigger than the one that we rented when we were in Australia, and that's on purpose. That motorhome was very small. It was a typical class B size. It meant we did not have a dedicated bed space. So every day was dismantle the bed so you had an eating and dining space, then remake the bed at night. So we have a dining area up front with our kitchen area and our dedicated bed. Much more livable for us for these past two weeks meant we didn't have to break everything down every day. There's also a drop-down bed up here. With this floor plan, you can actually even sleep six because the dinette folds down into yet another sleeping area. The refrigerator is a little smaller than we're used to back on our big 43-foot motorhome, but for the two weeks we've been here, it's been perfect for holding the amount of food we needed to have while we were on board. It's a pretty standard three-way fridge, so it runs off of the 240 volt main electrical power when you're plugged into shore. You can switch it manually to propane to run off the propane tank, or it can also run off of 12 volt when the engine is running. It's got the fair amount of refrigerator space, and then there's a little dedicated freezer space up top. Again, nothing special, but it's worked very well for us while we've been here. How about cooking that food? So cooking the food that comes out of the refrigerator, we have here, a three burner hob, as it's called in England. They've worked really well. Actually, we thought it might be a little bit of tight space, but we literally have had three pots on this going at one point in time and never had any trouble. Has electric ignition. And of course, our little covered sink. We found this cover went nicely right back there, stayed out of our way, and now we had a great cooking space. In addition to the hob though, there's also an oven it's a pretty good size. We did actually use the broiler. We bought some nice little uh, steak and ale pies from a local grocery store and cooked them up right here on board. That was great. And they also call it a grill. Uh, for North America, we would consider that a broiler. One other thing that we really liked in this motorhome, the windows open very nice and wide to let fresh air in. So here, we just flip these arms out and the window goes out and stays out. So it works great, particularly in the English weather where you might be getting a little bit of rain just about every day this time of year. Helps keep the window open and let air in without getting water in. How about bugs? Now, I heard there's midges here. <laughs> <laughs> there can be midges here. And so you want air without bugs. The screen just slides down and clips into place right here, which is fantastic. Really nice and clean, everything's hidden. The white look keeps it that get nice clean European look without being a little cluttered, but you can get rid of it. Get it out of your way so you can get fresh air if there's no bugs. How about privacy? Privacy works the same way. Close these, pull it up to any position you want, and it just locks into place. You can pull it all the way closed and now you're private for the evening. Or you can put it part way down and get semi-privacy but still get light and or air, which is works really well. Can the screen close down part way too? Indeed. So now you can have screen and privacy at whatever level you need. There are also three skylights on this RV and they have a very clever design that lets you have them in four different positions. Locked closed like this so that you're secure. Push this button in and pull this down and now you've got just a vented spot which is great for overnight to let air out and keep the moisture low without getting too cold. And then you can put it into a mid position or push it all the way open and get the maximum amount of air.
And just like on the windows on the side of the RV, you have the option of closing a screen. So you can pull the screen across, keep all those midges out. Or if you want a little bit of privacy and still get some fresh air, there's a room darkening shade. So you can put it in any position you want to get a little air, block the light, or close it completely. There's one right over the bed, and then there's a third in the shower, not the exact same mechanism, but again, lets you vent the steam out while you're showering so you don't have too much moisture buildup. And then the toilet has a nifty little feature that actually swivels. So you can give yourself a little bit more leg room to get in and out of the shower or swivel it out so that at an angle, we have more leg room while actually using the toilet. Or if you don't have those long legs, you can turn it fully this way. As far as storage space, there's been plenty on board. There's a large wardrobe in the center, as well as all of these great cabinets here along the bed that hold pl held plenty of clothes for us. In the kitchen, there's even more. So this was great for storing food. We've got our appliances with our toaster, which was great so we could make breakfast. Of course, a kettle for making tea. We are in England. And then there's more here in the dining area. We kept our raincoats and hats in one, and we had spot here for, again, more food surprising amount of storage space in a unit this small. And then right here behind the passenger seat, which of course is the driver's side in North America terms, is this really large counter space, which again is great for either food prep or storage. And then in it, there's all the china, neatly st stored in racks and held in place. It's and very rattly though on what, some of the roads. Yeah, we really needed some no skid to help keep that stuff from making too much noise, especially since it's right here behind us. But then more food storage with these little tilt out drawers one in each spot, really came in handy. Now this is a very new unit. It's a 2018 model, so of course it comes with LEDs. Lots of nice lighting here underneath the bed area. And then one set of lights that we really, really liked were these thin tube lights here under the counter, and there's one over the table as well. They shed a lot of light right in the area where you need it. And of course, because it's a tube, you can also pivot it. So that way you could angle it away and get more indirect lighting against the wall or bring it down directly and light up the surface you're working on. For brighter area light, there are these units here on the ceiling, which have a trick feature of just literally touching the surface of it to get it to come on. The only downside being that when you're staring at it to find the spot to hit, of course, you're getting blinded while you're turning it on and off. But they do provide a great amount of light the system on board for heating and for hot water is a unit from Truma called the Truma Combi, and its control panel is right here. It's really pretty handy because you can set it to either just do hot water on the top by turning the unit to the left, heats with propane, propane only unfortunately, so while you're hooked up to mains you're not getting, taking advantage of the electric, or you can turn it below this zero to the last two down below, and that's for heat. And once you set it to heat, then this inner dial then sets the setting for how warm you want it or how cool. It's amazingly quiet when it's in operating mode and heats the water incredibly hot. So it's really great for taking the shower because the tank itself is fairly small, but you never run out of hot water while you're using it. And of course, a system that's very important is the central control unit. Not too dissimilar to what we have in the units in North America. You can have a Salesman switch, as I call it, to turn the power for the whole RV on or off. There's also a switch here. This one with the light indicating it is for actually turning the power on to all the lights, which includes the TV, which runs off 12 volt. There's a patio light you can turn on, the water pump. You can check the, out, the indoor temperature. And then here's the tanks system, so we can check the capacity on the fresh tank. We're at 66. Hit it again, and our gray tank is currently empty. And then you can look at the battery voltage. So our house battery is at 14.4. We're currently hooked up to the mains and the charger is working. So you can see the batteries being charged. And then of course the chassis battery for the engine also being charged while we're hooked up. Since Peter's been doing all of the driving since we've been here in England, we're gonna have him show you around the cab. The first thing people think of when it comes to driving in England is the challenge of driving on the right hand side of the vehicle with the steering wheel on the right and driving on the vehicle itself on the left-hand side of the road. For me, that wasn't really too difficult because those of you who saw our Australia videos know that we spent three weeks down there about three years ago. And it's kind of like riding a bike. Once I got used to it, it came right back. The difference here in England is the width of the roads. And we're gonna do a completely separate video from this showing you just some samples of driving especially in Cotswold towns. The Cotswolds is an area of 
historic, beautiful, quaint towns with streets that are about this wide. What made it a little easier is that people know that the roads aren't wide enough to accommodate two-way traffic, even though they're two-way roads, and they give way to oncoming vehicles, they'll pull into little turnouts, they'll go slowly. People don't force their way around and make it a big deal. Now, one thing I didn't do, and maybe it was lack of courage, maybe it was common sense, I did not get a stick shift. We have an automatic transmission here, and this is a manumatic that can be shifted manually, but it's actually an automatic. There's no clutch in this motorhome. It wasn't because I don't know how to operate a clutch. Our Honda CRV is a stick shift car. I've actually never owned an automatic transmission car in my entire life. I've always driven sticks. The reason I didn't want to get a stick here was a couple of things. One is, I'm not very coordinated with my left hand and I figured that it was looking for trouble to try to shift with my left hand. I would have done that if not for the fact that you're also combining driving on the opposite side of the road and very narrow streets and having to navigate and figure out where you are all at the same time. I thought, let's not be cocky about this and figure I can handle anything and everything. Let's take all of the other components and we'll leave the shifting and clutching and all that for next time. So next time we come back to England, maybe you'll see me driving a stick shift through the Cotswolds at night in the rain, and then I will have covered it all. We hope you enjoyed this tour of our little rental motorhome. We learn a little bit each time we rent, like we learned from our time in Australia that we went a little smaller than we're comfortable with because we wanted to have a rig where we didn't have to tear down and set up the bed every day to make the kitchen table. So uh, we also didn't want to have uh, a wet bath. And I know that lots of people have wet baths and lots of people live in vans. We always give them major <laughs> props. We highly recommend renting a motor home in England. Definitely. You'll, you'll want to get something small enough that you can handle it. If you're concerned about driving, get something that's smaller. This is large enough that it takes a little confidence to handle on the road. I was quite comfortable just being navigator. So we're going to have a couple of other videos that follow this. The next one will be about water and electric and sewer and how it is that here the gray water and the black water go to different places. You don't even put them in the same place. And also we're going to have a very special video with our friend David Johns of Cruising the Cut who is a narrow boater and also a part-time RVer who yes. did a van conversion. Right, he did his own conversion of his own van, so that was neat if you want to check that out. That was a great video series. That is called Vandemonium. Also, if you're wondering how to get your name in the credits like the ones you see going by now, check us out on Patreon. We'll put links down below in the video description. And we hope you'll come join us. Also, our travels are followed in real time or near real time on Instagram. So if you haven't checked us out, we are Instagram.com slash RV Geeks. We hope you'll come join us and see what we're doing and maybe get a little bit of inspiration about RVing in other places. As always, safe travels and thanks for watching. I don't want to turn this motorhome in. <laughs> this was so much fun. People think we're joking about the Cotswolds and we're making, <laughs> no. making some hype about the Cotswolds that it's maybe, isn't that great? I missed the Cotswolds already and we only just left.